There are 44 firms you've invested in. You've looked at hundreds. You've talked to almost everyone in the private equity industry. 700 billion under management with all of the firms that you're invested in cumulatively. What are you looking for when you're investing in a private equity firm these days? Well, thank you very much for having me on. Uh, at Dial, we look for firms that are going to build a long-lasting, permanent business. And when you are entrusted with permanent capital by your investors, the goal is to find a great firm. Uh, the industry's not that old. It's only a 30-year industry for the most part. And so what we're trying to find is those founders that are taking something that was once just a cottage founder-owned industry and turning it into something that's permanent. Well, it's funny because a lot of these firms you've invested in started a lot smaller. Vista Equity, Sternlicht, um, Starwood Capital. So what do you add to the table? Once they take your money, how do they expand? Well, it's part of that explosive growth that really makes the opportunity for Dial. As these businesses get bigger and raise funds more quickly, they need capital to put alongside their investors. And we are that capital. We provide financial capital that they can invest in their funds as the GP. And then we add strategic capital. We have an industry-leading team, our business services platform, and they're out there every day working with these businesses to help them institutionalize the platform and make them something of a permanent entity. So the business since you've started running it has changed quite a bit. It started with investing in hedge funds. You've then invested in a lot of private equity firms, more recently private credit. What does private equity 2.0 look like as the industry starts to get bigger? As investors have wanted to do more things with fewer firms, the big are really separating themselves from the pack. And what that means is they're having to find new ways to add value across their portfolio. So what once was a, a more buy and sell business 10, 20 years ago is turning really into a race of value creation. How can these firms create platforms that can go in and transform a company? It might take a little bit longer than the original model, but really drive value creation over time to generate those returns for their investors. It's interesting that you say race of value creation. Does, do you need a ton of scale to really win these days in the private equity industry? Well, there's always going to be an opportunity for small firms, and there are a lot of small companies around the world. So it's not our area of focus. We think the largest global investors, though, are going to want to put more and more capital into the private markets. And to do so, they need leading partners. And to do that with big companies, you really need a big value creation team. And that's where you see firms like Vista, like Silver Lake, that have invested tremendous amounts of money in their platform and are going in, rolling up the sleeves, and actually turning these companies into leading businesses within their industries. The more recent place that you've been diving into is private credit. It's at a time when a lot of people are diving into private credit. Are you concerned that there might be too much money flowing into this industry? Right the growth now? in the private credit industry has been phenomenal since 2009. There's no doubt about it. But when you think about it, it's only about a $600 billion industry right now. That compares in, in, in only a small fraction of what the large banks were lending to mid-sized companies back in the pre-2008 era. So what these private credit firms are doing is trying to replace a massive machine that was the banking industry that's been hobbled by regulation. And so what we're seeing is the upstart of these very big, profitable, successful private credit firms. So then one of the recent firms you've invested in is Owl Rock, very popular new firm in this industry. You've made it a unicorn. Are you worried that valuations are flying away from you here? Well, a lot of our firms are unicorns. Um, they, these are very profitable large institutions at the scale that they operate. And so valuations, we don't see really fluctuating all that much. But if you are a large firm that has a tremendous platform and a, hopefully a long runway uh, for many, many years to come, investors are going to value that. And I think it's a, a great place to invest. Now, what do you do about your own exit strategy? You're on five funds now, most recently a record. What's, what's the exit here? Well, what we love about these businesses is that we think they are truly becoming long-lasting organizations that will outlast any one, two, or three individuals. And so what we look for is the ability to find companies that we can own for 20, 25, or 30 years. And if we don't have to exit, we can just share in the cash flow of these organizations throughout that whole period. We want to be their partner indefinitely. We don't negotiate a buyout or an end to our relationship. 
unlike a lot of the portfolio deals with the managers we're partnered with, we're not looking for what the sell is going to be like. We want to be partnered with these firms for a long time. But is an IPO a possible exit for some of these opportunities here? Well, we, there's always an opportunity for our underlying portfolio companies, our partners, to access the public markets. Um, you know, that's up to them. We'd be along for the ride as a minority partner. For us, particularly with these long-lasting private capital businesses, we think the right thing to do is hold them through the cash flow cycle for a long time to come.